React Query is one of the most used libraries in React. In fact, every fifth project in production is actually used in it. But Tanstack actually offers an array of other libraries that makes it really, really easy to create modern React applications. Now, the cool thing about these libraries is that they are really pragmatic at how they solve the problems and they are really developer friendly. And I bet that there is at least one of them that you've never heard of. Now, the first one, of course, is Tanstack Query. This one used to be called React Query, but it has been renamed to Tanstack because it also supports other frameworks. And this library makes it really easy to work with server state or with some data that you get from a backend. And it just provides you with two major hooks, use query and use mutation. And these hooks provide you with a few fields that you can use in your application, like is pending, error, and the data itself. And this is used to wrap your actual query function, which is something that you actually do yourself. So this library does not do the fetching for you, but just manages the server state. And then you can use these fields to show loading states, errors, and of course, success states. And this is just a really basic example, but the library takes care of a lot of stuff internally for you without ever having to worry about. And this includes things like caching or cache invalidation and also how to manage the state globally. So instead of worrying about when the user is going to open a page and manually trigger a fetch function. So it's actually the other way around here. Every time that a component renders that is using a query, then the data is automatically fetched from the backend. And if that same data is used somewhere else in the user interface, then the data is just shared under the hood. I'm actually currently working on a video about the top 20 React query patterns. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Next is my new favorite React router library, and this is Tanstack Router. So in React, especially when we're talking about single page applications, we have to do the routing on the client, meaning in the browser. So if you want to have multiple paths inside your application, you should somehow grab the URL and show the correct component that matches that URL. And this is what this library does for you. And this one is really packed with features and it makes it really, really easy to work with navigation, which is something that can be also really tricky. The cool thing about it is that it has 100% inferred TypeScript support. And you can also use validation libraries like archetype or Zod to validate the URL parameters coming from the user. It also has other features like prefetching and file based route generation. And this is a really cool feature because you just need to create a file inside your routes folder and it generates this code for you so you don't have to worry about it yourself. And it also means that your routes folder directly matches the structure of the URL. Enough about this library. If you want to learn more about it, I've actually made a separate video that shows you exactly how to use it. Next, we have Tanstack Form, and this is actually a new addition. I am still just getting to know this library and playing around with it. And this is really similar to React Hook Form. If you look at the API, we have this Use Form hook where you define the initial values and the unsubmit handler. You can also pass in your schema here for schema validation. Then you have your normal HTML form. And then there is this specific form that field that comes from this use form hook. And this is just a component that you can use to render your form inputs. So what I really like about this is how transparent the API is. You can easily bind the form to the form fields with this component and you don't have to spread fields. And this means that you can easily use your custom UI or use a third party UI library without the need of adapters or something like that. So here we have a form field. In this case, this is a simple input element. And then we have our validation here. We have a synchronous validation function here. And then we have an async validation function. It also has built in debouncing. So this is really useful if you have something like a login form and you wanna check if the email already exists, which means when the user types in the email, you're going to make an API call here inside on change async and the API endpoint is going to tell you if the user already exists with that email. And then if the user already exists, you can show the user an error. Your email is already taken. It also has debouncing built in, which is a really cool feature that you don't have in other libraries. Then next on the list, we have Tanstack table. This is a headless UI library for building powerful tables and data grids. As you can see, the documentation is actually 
really, really thorough. There are so many topics when it comes to creating tables, which is something that you would initially not expect. Tables are one of those UI components that can be either really simple or really complex and powerful. And the documentation here is really awesome. It goes over a lot of topics and a lot of features that you commonly see inside tables like sorting, grouping, expanding, pagination, etc. And this is actually just a headless UI library, which means it doesn't really provide you with any components or really just a set of utilities and hooks that you can use in your application. This is really useful if you want to create your own table component and don't want to use a library for that so that you can use your own UI component and that way it suits your whole application. And my advice here, if you're starting to work with this library would be to start small and then slowly build up. Because if you try to read the whole documentation at once, it may be a bit overwhelming. Then we have Tansac Virtual. This is a really practical library if you're trying to show a large data set to the user. And the way that this library works is just by rendering only the items that the user can actually see in the screen. So the items that are outside of the scroll containers are actually not rendered. And when the user scrolls and the items are visible to the user, then they are rendered. So if you ever come across performance problems due to large data sets, make sure to check this one out. Then we have another tiny library and this one is Tanstack Ranger. This is another headless UI library that you can use to create sliders, which actually surprised me because I was just not expecting this kind of libraries in Tanstack, but it's also cool to just check it out. So this is what the code looks like. You just have this use ranger hook where you pass in the minimum, the max, the step size, and also a callback when the values change. And you also have your values that you manage yourself inside the state. And then you can render your slider however you like, because this is a headless UI library, so you actually do the rendering yourself. Then we have Tanstack Store, which is a framework agnostic type safe store. And what this means is that we have a state management library that you can use with any other framework. And the way you do that is with using adapters. So in contrast to the other libraries that we've taken a look up until now, this is actually a library that you can use to create your own framework agnostic library or package. And the way to use Tanstack store in React is actually really simple. You just define your store with an initial data, and then you can use the use store hook, which take in the store and also a selector as parameters. So you just grab the data that is relevant to you. And then there is also a store that set state. And here you just receive the previous state as a value, and then you can return the new value. So this is really useful if you want to create a library that supports different frameworks and you want to share the code between them. But last but not least, we have Tanstack config. This one is also for people who want to publish their own libraries and it just provides you with a configuration and a few tools that you can use to create and publish your packages. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out my other uploads. For example, my latest video about compound components in React or how to think in React. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.